two. When it comes to modifier order and being able to replicate a specific order of modifiers, KitOps also is able to excel in that regard. So utilizing box cutter, let's actually show that in action. So I'm already in box and we have a jump off point in the center of this face. So we'll just bring that down. I'll press control G or uh, control D and then the mini helper will jump this up to a circle of 64 segments. I like seeing the vertices for the circle change, but I don't like seeing the word none. I'll be checking into that but we're just going to continue just drawing cuts in here, pressing T to expand on it. Of course, we can um, utilize a little bit of smart apply hackery if we wanted to get real specific with things. So let's try that. We'll select this and shift click smart apply to now be messing with a actual non-destruct or a uh, destructively applied version of this. So this is probably our closest way to getting a uh, kind of derived mesh workflow in Blender at this time. But it is something that I do hear people from Max asking about all the time is, you know, if there's a way you can see modifiers in edit mode and work on a derived mesh, it's like, uh, you know, Blender's not that way right now. You know, who knows? The future is always subject to change when it comes to Blender. So we're just, all we're doing is just creating a subtraction piece that, you know, fits in the contour of the circle and goes over to the other side. Of course, if these modifiers were in any other order, they wouldn't be able to work out. So it's pretty crucial that they are in the order that they're currently in. With this shape, I'm going to, under behaviors, turn on active only. And by having both of these selected, I can actually jump off of this as my main shape. And because I flipped the normal to do that reverse Boolean, I can just extrude this down, but we'll press T and now we've kind of created a cut inside of the lip. And so if I wanted to replicate the same technique I was showing with Smart Apply in a slightly more angularly advanced area, I could go under Operations, Shift-click Smart Apply to have an applied version. And we'll just isolate this loop by first sharpening it. And then we can at least press L to isolate this area in face mode. And we'll just scale that in just ever so slightly but we don't want to scale it in too much. Maybe something like that. And this is our midpoint that we're going to be working off of. And we're actually working on the same angle that we were on the previous piece. The lower half never matters to me because I know that, you know, mirror has my back. So we're just creating our little insert here, nothing fancy. And we'll first mod and apply on the Y and then we'll mod apply on the X for the finale. And we can actually give this thickness manually. I was going to solidify it, but it would actually shoot it in the wrong direction. We want to shoot it up this direction. And we could actually press Control plus to Control i to invert S, Z, 0. And then bring this in linearly in order to cut this. And then just using hard ops, pressing Q difference, we've actually set up a pretty nice shape for us to be cutting out with kit ops today. And then maybe just to top it off, we'll throw a little radial symmetry in there. So I will just create a box shape up at the top. But we want to make sure the box shape is being mirrored adequately. So there's no radial issues later whenever we try to reapply it. And we'll shift it to live. And with this shape, we can actually just choose to radial array. But if we control click it, we'll radial array around the 3D cursor, which will get us something like this. And now if we look at this, this is actually the shape that we'll be just kind of taking out for kit ops. So, you know, with this, it's a series of shapes that are kind of relying on each other in order to exist. For example, if we cut the hole at the end, a lot of this wouldn't actually make sense because the stuff at the bottom wouldn't be able to happen. So just to show this aspect of kit ops in action, I will just, you know, hide that piece. Actually, let's leave it. We could just apply the radial array or we can leave it dynamic where we can just scroll and choose these on the fly, depending on how I want to leave this insert in the pack. If I want to have an empty attached, but really we should probably just cut and run. So I will do that visual geometry to mesh and we can just delete the empty. And at least we don't have to deal with any extra rigmarole weirdness outside the um, test case that I had in my head. So of course we'll call this insert test with power save and then we'll power save and if we look at this you know the order of modifiers that we did well sort of 
we kind of made so this one is our first cutter and then cube one and two are kind of interjections so i'm actually going to copy these names and we'll paste them but we'll um just ensure that they come in at the end like i said you want to make sure your names are in order or else you'll run into some issues so this is us just doing a little bit of housekeeping you know maybe even make sure this one is zero 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 to double confirm that there's no weirdness with our order whenever we do this so i'm just going to press b and just box select all of these in the list control s n and we'll bring open the kit ops panel and we'll jump over to the uh, new demo pack we've been working on and this will be circular ins2 so we will just create insert and we see that everything just made the connection we didn't throw any unions in there to uh, kind of wrench us but we should have to just show the power of it in action and at this point I'm actually just selecting the floor and then looking at the auto smooth to just make sure the auto smooth is just absolutely right and it really doesn't matter we can just save the insert and we'll call the circular INS 2 and if we save this we see that the cameras already positioned where we want and we can look at the render scene and we still have the same render scene that we've been dealing with this whole time where I have yet to change it and make it mine. But, you know, for the sake of this demo and having some fun, let's just delete these two. Let's turn off the uh, HDR and we can just press Alt V. And now we can just scroll through some blank environments. You know, I really like that red one. I knew I was going to miss it when I left it, but we can go with that one. Then maybe press Alt-VV to find an environment, and we'll just make that the render environment. So this is basically what we're looking at so far. So I at least want to see inside the hole with my insert, and there we've hit pay dirt. You know, sometimes I really regret not having to back and forward, so I'm more than likely maybe thinking about that down the road. But for now, let's focus on the now. We'll render our thumbnail. And after a few seconds, it renders. And we can just close our scene for we are done. And we already saved this file in a state that I would want to return to it. And if I had to return to it, so there's no need to save it again. You know, good old power save. Saving the things, actually wrong, de uh, wrong insert folder. We'll go to circular INS. And let's just test what we have. So I did no troubleshooting, I did no setup, I did no panel clicking. And if we just add our insert, we see that the results are just results. We got exactly what we would get if we don't change the insert to specify which one is the main insert and get our parenting and origins in order. So that was one of the steps that was left out. If we choose to edit our insert, we can quickly edit this insert. And I'm just gonna select everything. We're just gonna apply location, rotation, scale, and then we can just locate which one's the uh, main insert. It's this one. We'll drag everything on top of it. You know, maybe hold shift so it parents it. And then in the end panel of kit ops, we want to make this the main OBJ. And then by saving it, we now know that this insert is the way it's supposed to be. But we definitely need to specify which one is the main. I mean, we really got lucky just assuming that everything was set to difference but if it shows it like that in the preview then you can trust it but in the event you need to convert everything selected to a difference you can always right click and just choose copy to select it and we'll ensure that everything selected is set to be a difference whenever it's used so we'll just save our insert and we can just control in and now we can actually show this properly so i've been talking with some people lately who's been having issues with their inserts and them not working out. And it always comes back to setting up your parent and setting up the main insert because now if we insert it, we get exactly what the doctor ordered. However, we may want to adjust our auto smooth just a little bit. And we'll just turn off viewport visibility just for a moment. So we could just, you know, admire the insert that we are inserting at this time. And we see that, you know, at some sizes it can get a little bit tricky. You know, whenever you're inserting so many booleans at the same time, so many modifiers, it can get a little bit unwieldy. So you have to almost be thinking about, you know, the troubleshooting aspect of things. Like, um, I'm almost curious in, as why this would not work. You know, instead of scaling it to fit, it's more like, why would it not work? And what can we do to actually make it work? So we want to turn off auto select insert and we can actually tap into edit mode. 
and I'm just alt snapping, moving it to the side because I've been on the laptop a lot lately. And we're just gonna bring this out. Even though it was already out, we see that that was um, almost it. Maybe just a slight rotation to just break one of these things from hotlining each other was more than likely all it took. So we could actually edit the insert one more time and just get in here and rotate it ever so slightly just to ensure that we're not creating that hotline situation, which would just be us doing just that and then just saving the insert. And we just can prevent that sort of hotline situation from happening at all levels of scale. So sometimes whenever you experience an issue, you do want to um, get in and troubleshoot and find out why it's happening because more than likely there is a reason why failure occurs. And so I'm always curious in the why than the, um, than the actual occurrence itself because, you know, issues happen. That is life. Life is us attempting to solve a series of issues, but the why is definitely the part that you know enriches and helps enhance so let's just get in here dropping our insert and now you can see that our insert orders are kept we're inserting this thing nicely there's no hotlining issues things work at all scales and we can just wrap up this video and i'd like to thank you guys for watching kidops also has the capabilities of duplicating inserts if you're using smart mode in kidops pro so to show that in action We'll just add an insert and just scale that down. And we have auto select on, which will select the insert whenever we click it automatically. And if we were to sh shift D and press Y, we can actually just duplicate it very easily, which is one of the best ways to uh, duplicate your insert and reuse it on the fly. Of course, there are some restrictions of, you know, when it comes to snapping, you can't snap to something that you're currently cutting into. But when it comes to just quickly just getting something just snapped and duplicated very quickly that's rather complex, KitOps is definitely one of the best ways to do it. And we turn this off and we see that we were able to place this exactly on the inside.